Hey, what's up guys, Danny here, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about AMD's new processor architecture called Zen. I know for quite a while now, I was focusing a lot on the GPU side of things, but that was mostly because we had very limited info on Zen until recently. Now, I don't want to overhype you guys or anything like that, because the information that was presented is still quite limited. There are still quite a lot of uh, questions that have yet to be answered, and that didn't include everything. This wasn't a full unveiling. However, what was shown was very interesting and makes Zen appear to be very promising. Now, AMD held an event this past week where they showed some information in regards to Zen and even included a live demo which showed a Zen processor going head to head against a Broadwell E Intel processor. But more on that later. So before the event even had occurred, we didn't really have a lot of information on Zen. What we did know was that Zen is a completely new architecture built from the ground up. The main highlight of Zen and the focus was to increase per core performance. In their previous generation of processors, AMD was using what is called a clustered multi-threading multi uh, process. But with Zen, they are using a new process called simultaneous multi-threading, which will allow for higher per thread floating point performance. In a way, you can think of SMT as AMD's own version of Intel's hyper-threading. So therefore, one of Zen's biggest features is that it supposedly boasts a 40% increase in IPC. IPC performance is basically the average number of instructions executed for each clock cycle. And remember, we're talking about each core separately here. This was the area AMD really needed to focus on and hit hard at. With their previous bulldozer architecture, they seriously dropped the ball as they focused on multi-core performance instead of increasing single core performance. As it turned out, applications and games were still utilizing less cores instead of many. So strong single core performance is heavily pre uh, preferred and was heavily favored. And as we all know, Intel had that in the bag, whereas AMD was lacking in that department significantly. Included in Zen will be a high bandwidth, low latency cache. We also know that AMD's new processor Zen will be produced on the new 14 nanometer FinFET process tracked from Global Foundries. The new Zen CPUs will be on a completely new platform which will be called AM4 and FP4. Don't worry too much about the FP4 platforms as that is for the mobile processors that will be yielded from Zen. The enthusiast grade processors and APUs will be on AM4. And this AM4 platform will have support for DDR4 and PCI Express Generation 3.0. It's about time. Along with that, being on a new manufacturing process, these new chips will be significantly more energy efficient. Later on in Computex 2016, we were shown a early, very early engineering sample of what was AMD's Summit Ridge, an 8-core 16-thread CPU based on Zen, which will utilize AM4. They also mentioned at Computex that with Zen, they will be targeting multiple market segments. So that includes the desktop market, so you know you've got your gamers and your content creators, the server market, notebooks, and embedded products. So that was what we basically knew from before this recent AMD event. Now AMD is still boldly claiming that Zen will offer a 40% IPC increase over its past design. AMD showed off some high level changes which is what will make Zen a really powerful product. This included a completely new design to its branch prediction and signifies that first AMD processors to have micro-op cache. Along with that, they have integrated a wider execution width with uh, broader instruction schedulers. These changes will help improve the much needed single threaded performance. Summit Ridge will have 8 megabytes of shared L3 cache and will allow up to 5 times the cache bandwidth to a core. Furthermore, Summit Ridge will be the first product available with Zen. Based on the AM4 platform as I said earlier, the processors go up to 8 cores and 16 threads, so there's going to be multiple SKUs. So with Zen, AMD is looking into competing head-to-head -head against Intel's enthusiast-grade processors. This move is basically a direct opposite of what they did with their new GPU lineup Polaris. However, with the CPU market, it's a totally different story. Unlike the GPU market, AMD was pretty much absent had a, and had a lot of catching up to do. Although now, it appears that AMD may have finally made a comeback. AMD had two demonstrations to show off. The first consisted of a system which had a Zen processor paired with a Fury X running the upcoming Deuce X on, uh, on 4K. This demonstration, I guess, was targeted towards the high-end and enthusiast uh, gamer market. 
Now the second demonstration is what is what had everyone surprised and many people hyped up. AMD showed a Zen based system which has 8 cores, 16 threads, go head to head against another system which consisted of a Broadwell E Intel processor, the 6900K which is also an 8 core 16 thread processor. The benchmark they used was called Blender which is a program used to measure the performance of a rendering workload. Both processors were clocked at 3.0 GHz and nearing the end of the test, the system with the Zen processor finished just slightly early than the system using the 6900K. Seeing that is very intriguing and is quite satisfying to see. From the test, we can take away a couple things here. One, the IPC performance of Zen is basically on par if not better than Broadwell E. And two, Zen will scale higher than 3 GHz in its 8 core configuration. Now I know some people are going to say that hey, in, that the Intel uh, processor was clocked lower and that something's definitely up here. Well AMD's reason for that is pretty simple. The Zen chip that they used was an early engineering sample. These samples are usually clocked considerably lower than what the final release product will yield. For the longest time now, many fans and enthusiasts were hoping AMD would make a performance leap which would put them on a similar level to Intel, somewhere where they could at least compete. On the contrary, many people, um, including myself actually, were expecting Zen to realistically have performance along the lines of Haswell E, or between Haswell and Broadwell. And then taking it from there, AMD would pro uh, probably price it appropriately based on that performance. However, the fact that they managed to attain this level of performance is quite remarkable. Due to AMD's absence from the market, Intel has been pretty much going wild with their products and doing what whatever they wanted, simply because the market competition wasn't there. Just look at the recent offerings from Intel, specifically the Broadwell E lineup. Although the processors are packing quite a lot of performance, $1100 or even $1600 is absolutely crazy. The processors aren't even that much faster than the previous generations. We're talking about maybe a 5 to 10 performance increase. Assuming you were to compare two processors with the same amount of cores and threads. This is the state that the market is in right now. And this is why we need AMD to pull through with Zen. This will allow for more direct competition between Team Red and Team Blue. Thus leading to more innovation, better products, and in the end, everyone wins and benefits from this, including us the consumers. However, let's not get too hyped up just yet. You know, I would really love to say that, hooray, AMD is here to save the day. Now we can get processors that are as fast as the 6950X and 6900K for like half the price or like five or six hundred dollars, but that simply probably isn't just the case. We don't have that much information just yet. The best thing to do here would be to wait until the release of Zen, when third party reviewers can get their own hands on these chips and test them out on their own. Only then should you make any final conclusions. I remember back after when Computex uh, had happened and when AMD had shown the RX 480 and uh, showed the Ashes of the Singularity demo, many people had overhyped the performance of the RX 480. People were going off and saying things like, oh, it's going to offer Titan level performance or Fury X level performance for like $200 when they clearly had never said that and that was just based off of one demo. Again, we just saw one demo. Uh, with the AMD Zen processors, so until we see more tests, until until there's more thoroughly tests uh, conducted, don't make any conclusions. Please don't go around saying that you're gonna get 6900K level at like $200 or something like that. So yeah, just going a little bit off off topic there. Don't set your expectations too high. There are still many things we need to see in regards to Zen. There are still many things we don't know yet as well. We don't know what kind of SKUs we will get and the pricing. That's also huge. And there's also still quite a few other things such as like how much motherboards will, might even cost. But uh, from what we've seen so far, Zen is really looking promising and I for one am looking very forward to its development. So guys, that's pretty much all I have to say in regards to Zen. Um, I'll probably be doing more follow up videos as I found out more information about Zen. But until then, definitely stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe. Um, leave a like if you like this video and found it very informative. And also, leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. I want to know your thoughts about Zen and whether or not you might even be building a Zen-based system when it's released or when you can get your hands on Zen. Thank you guys so much for your time. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.